After four weeks, exactly 28 days if you include the day that this video is going out, we have built a mini figure scale Lego Naboo Tri Bubble Bongo, which the name itself nearly takes four weeks to try and pronounce correctly, but I think it's looking really, really cool. Again, there is a playlist with the four weekly episodes of sort of behind the scenes, building it, my thoughts on trying to plan for this project. And then at the end of week four, I also gave my thoughts on how I felt the project ran. Now, this is the first giant Lego Star Wars mock I've done. I think the biggest thing before this was just one of the regular size dioramas. And this is part of an even bigger project, which is slowly seeing me build up, building bigger and bigger mocks until we get to 100K subscribers, where I'll be building a minifigure scout Star Destroyer. I've already answered a lot of questions around that in my recent Q&A. So I'll leave the Q&A and the playlist for the four weekly episodes on the end screen and probably also linked in the description. But that is enough talking, you probably want to see a close-up of the bongos. So let's take a look at everything I've worked towards these last four weeks. This diorama takes place on a massive grey 48 by 48 base plate. So it is the biggest model that I have ever created in both depth, in width and also probably in height because the way we've angled the bongo here makes it, well, probably over half of the base plate tool. So it's a really, really big model. There's tons of detail in the scenery, but I think the first thing you'll want to look at is the bongo itself. Now it is a tri-bubble, so we have got the three different cockpits around and the back two are just filled with a bit of junk and the usual crates and random elements that you'll expect, I guess, in the back here. But the front one includes the three minifigures which are present in this scene. Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Jar Jar Binks. Now the cockpit is also roughly to scale with these figures. We've got the control panels at the front. There's a few crates next to Qui-Gon. And if you do want a closer look to how I built each of these, you can find that in the weekly videos. But there's also a fair bit of greebling on the outside here, just to get the cockpit rounded off around these elements, which I purchased just for this build. So, Thank you to everyone purchasing my instructions. There will be an update to where you can get them very, very soon. But the Greeblin does look really, really cool. Just a few frying pan studs here. And this is probably the most complicated collection of elements just to slope off the round bit here to get it nice and flush with the top of the build. And speaking of getting it flush, there are a bunch of slope elements that go the whole way around this. Even on the back side here, what you can see underneath is, we'll take a closer look at that in a second, some one by twos sloping off the bottom of the model as well, just to add that extra bit of detail out of sight. But I've tried to add as much detail as I can down to the little swirly lines at the back here and not cover too many studs. We've got a fair amount of studs for those of you who prefer the studs to show and this corner is making use of all the pieces to cover as many as we can. Now, it wouldn't be the bongo without the extra long towel. This towel is 30 bricks long, I believe, from the start of the engine here. And in the Star Wars universe is actually just over nine meters long. It is massive, so I'm sure you could probably size up the minifigures and see just how big that is compared to the height of a minifigure, which for my scale is 180 centimeters. It's one to 45 if you wanted to recreate it. I've used a few different bar elements to get the twisting shapes of the tails to match what we see from the bongo in The Phantom Menace. And you may spot back there, there is a bigger fish, at least, it's bigger than the school of fish down there. And the reason it is all the way back there in the corner is because that fish is actually massive. We're talking bongo size and I've created some distance between that and the bongo because I really didn't have the space to create that fish on top of this model. Towards the end, we'll take a look at this in the display with the minifigure stand because I'm currently reworking the minifigure stand, but this is gonna be a permanent part of my display for at least the next couple of months until I start work on the other one. So I have shied no expense in the work and the effort that I've put into this base. You can see there is a pink jellyfish here which uses 
the umbrella from a friend's poly bag I got in January, and a few pieces from World Playdate last year. And we've also got a school of fish down there swimming up to that coral piece at the back. I think that coral piece is another piece I got probably in one of the VIP bags last year. We've got a lot of greenery, a few colored pebbles to add the pop of color that you'd expect to the underwater and there's a fair share of other underwater life across this model as well. A few frogs, a few crabs, so keep your eye out for them. But we've got to take a look at this rock work back here because honestly, this probably took the most time out of all of the individual updates. I spent a few days working on it and it took two or three days to get it looking as realistic as it does. You can see there are gaps every so often in the rocks and even round the back, we've got to admire the different slope pieces and different gaps I've put in the rock work because if you were to take a cross section of a rock wall or some underwater rocky terrain, it's not gonna be fully bricked up like most of this is here. There's gonna be some gaps where the rocks have eroded. There's little gaps for fish to perhaps take cover and especially this corner here, half of the wall actually missing. It just comes across a lot more natural, but the main focus of the display is of course the front here. I mean, we've got a little ledge there with some sea life and all the slopes that I've used, I've used a variety of slopes. Pretty much if Lego have made that angle, I've tried to recreate it here. I've even included some slopes you can see in the center of your screen out of system and there's even one up the top here just to get even more angles than we can typically with Lego bricks, including some rounded bricks towards the bottom to create some curves as well as slopes and just really go all in for the angles we can get. And for a bit of storytelling, I also removed one of the legs from this fish because perhaps this isn't their first fight, but after it comes up to the Naboo Bongo, it will definitely be their last. You can get a better look here of all of these slopes on the underside of the bongo, which I think do round it off, as well as the rounded slope just there on the corner. And the bongo does have a lot, a lot of detail. The closer you look and the longer you look at this, the more detail you spot. You can see right on the bottom bit here, we've got the green lights, which you see flashing in the movie. And we've also got a thin blue strip, which gets thinner as it goes up until it's like a third of a plate thick. So definitely keep your eye out for any more details that I forgot to mention, just like the round yellow one by one bricks, which also add that yellow light that you see glowing from the engine. I'm not quite sure what that is meant to represent. It hasn't been noted in any of the dictionaries I used, but one cool thing about this towel is it does also spin like it does in the movie. Now I've got to be careful because it does brush with the leaves over there. But the fact that it spins at all, I think is really, really cool and definitely a feature I wanted to implement. Now, as you can see, it is a fragile model. The jellyfish does pop off. I occasionally do also hit some of these leaf elements, but as it's a display piece and not meant to be a playset of any kind, um, not too fussed about the fragility of this model and think that some of the sacrifices I've made to make it look better rather than stronger are definitely worth it when it's on my shelf. So now that the four towels are back on, I can show you just how they're connected because they're not actually on any of the studs. You might just be able to see that they're actually in between the studs and that gets them all central on a, I think it was a six by six round plate that we used. And I think that just looks really, really cool coming out the back of the bongo. And I'm very happy with how this display has gone. So let me know what you think in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed this month long build. I've already said the next one's probably going to be a Naboo scenic mock, probably based around Theed, the capital city. But let me know what else you'd like to see in this size. And perhaps there's a few minifigure scale vehicles that aren't as common that I can add to Naboo. So here it is as I will be displaying it for the next couple of weeks, months. I really don't have a time scale. I fixed the towel in the last clip. Two of the bars were pointing the same way. So I fixed it so that they're all going in their separate directions, propelling the ship forward. And you can see 
that it does overhang the border of the diorama by two bricks, but it's not enough to collide with any of the minifigure display as I do have all my Astromechs lined up on the side. Speaking of, I am reorganizing them. I might turn all the minifigures around on their side like I've done Luke, but I definitely prefer them looking straight forward. So I might have to get rid of a few characters to make space for some newer Lego minifigures. But I think overall the Star Wars section does look really, really awesome. I hope you did enjoy not only looking at this today, but if you have watched any of the other videos, I hope you've enjoyed this whole month long building experience. And if you have, please be sure to drop a like, comment your favorite thing about this model and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And as always, may the bricks be with you.